those of you who don't know Marcel, Marcel's been in a lot of different segments of the performance automotive industry for quite a bit of time. Uh, right now he has a series of television shows on Amazon. Like you said, I've got a, a strange career in motorsports. Mm -hmm. I used to actually race boats, but I've always just been into trucks. It's been kind of my deal. So it's not really a far cry away from this C10 truck that mm -hmm. I built recently that um, is a 410 LS uh, with a 76 millimeter precision turbo. I originally built it for autocross. It's something that allows you to learn a lot more about driving to help you hone your technical driving skills. Yeah. But 40 miles an hour in a parking lot gets a little boring. Yeah. So definitely taking out on a road course is what I love to do. So getting back to the truck, tell us about the setup. What, do you, what, what have you done to the suspension? What, do, uh, what have you done to the chassis essentially to make it handle? That truck actually started life as a long bed. So I actually cut my truck in half, bolted on and then welded uh, a rear frame clip. That, would, that made it a short bit. Okay. The next thing I did is um, I, I worked with Ride Tech on, the, on a coilover system. Mm -hmm. um, right now that's just got a single adjustable coilover, which to me in that type of driving is perfect. Yeah. Um, not too many mistakes to say. Sometimes you have too much. And, and again, the truck was meant to drive. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a show vehicle. If it's gonna get a baby dent here and there, it's no big deal. Yeah. It's just made for fun. To, to do uh, some of the fun stuff that we show you in the uh, intro to this video, obviously you've got to pack a little bit of power under the hood and you got to have something controlling that. So the engine is a 410 LS. Mm -hmm. So it's a stroke iron block 60 LS1. Mm -hmm. uh, LS3 style heads for the trick flow. Um, it was built by Peter Guy Racing. So uh, the rest of it too is all business. I mean, the interior is made for safety. I have master crap racing seats, there's suspension seats. It's not just a cruiser. It, it's something you're gonna get into being business. Well, it's smart, and that's just, I mean, that's a testament to your experience in the industry, knowing that- Or my know, lack of it. Or my experience, <laughs> right? There's or otherwise, right, yeah. right. Obviously being a racing electronics company, we deal with a lot of racers yeah. and um, all of our best partners and relationships, our engineers, everybody stresses the safety element right. of things. No, totally. And, and that's exactly at the end of the day, if you walk away, it's, it's metal. Yeah, you know, yeah, you can rebuild it's it, fine. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's not the first time I've pounded dents out of that thing, so. <laughs> it won't be the last. It won't be the last. No, right. So why are you here today? So here today, um, I'm interested in looking at your CD7 digital display. What I don't like about traditional gauges is that it's very difficult to read them at speed. Yes. I think that a bright digital display is what I'm really looking for. What I really caught my eye about yours is it's very bright in the sun. You know, funny thing, uh, when we created that dash a couple of years ago, um, our number one priority was to make a direct sunlight readable dash. And that's because we have Bonneville land speed races on our engineering team. Absolutely. So these guys are out in the middle of the salt, in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the day, right. when the sun is beating through that back window. So direct sunlight, <laughs> so direct sunlight readability was critical. Yes. Uh, the other thing that, uh, you know, again, you mentioned you have a Holly and that's gonna make this extra easy because right? not only do we talk to, um, the, the dash is CAN bus based. Right. So we don't have uh, a bunch of inputs on the back of it where you're limited to 20 or maybe 30 various right. analog or frequency or temperature based inputs. What we do is we bring all the data in over CAN bus. And as you know, Holly Dominator outputs on a CAN bus. Correct. And we not only are able to import that data into the dash and configure it, but we make a plug and play cable. I know. So you don't even have to make your own cable to do this. We're going to be able to connect to the CAN2 or one of the CAN inputs. We have two on the back of the dash. Perfect. And then we will connect the other side to the CAN output on the Holly Dominator. Okay. We're going to give it power and ground and go into the software. Okay. It's going to be like maybe a five, 10 minute installation Jeez. of, of you know, making the connection. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Get it mounted up and we'll make the connection, pop the software in and show you how to configure everything. Nice. All right. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. All about it.